following is a live presentation of CBC Sports. The Vancouver Heroes in Game 1. Paul Reinhardt with the winning goal in overtime and the net mighty of Kirk McLean. The Flames answered the wake-up call for Game number 2 and were led by Joel Otto and Colin Patterson. It was Otto's goal with a setup from Patterson in the first period that got the Flames rolling. The two combined to make it 2 nothing, and this one was Calgary's. With the Smythe semifinal now tied at 1, the scene shifts to Vancouver for Game 3, a building where the Canucks 18-year-old rookie Trevor Linden has been outstanding. A place where the size and physical game of a Jim Sandlack will be needed. The Flames are not out hoping the road will remove some pressure from the high-scoring Joey Mullen. The other big gun in the Flames' arsenal, Joe Neuendijk, may also find the West Coast more to his liking. The road to the Stanley Cup continues with a stop in Vancouver. The Flames and Canucks in Game 3. Molson Hockey Night in Canada on CBC. He lets it go. Brought to you by Molson Canadian. What beer's all about. By Ford of Canada, where quality is more than a commitment. Quality is job one. By Pepsi, the choice of a new generation. ESO retailers and agents across Canada. If 82 was any indication, the Pacific Coliseum should be rocking tonight. Hi, everyone. I'm Steve Armitage, and welcome to Game 3 in the Smart Division semifinal between the Canucks and Flames. In their 19-year history in the NHL, 1982 was by far and away the Vancouver Canucks' most productive playoff campaign. It started when they eliminated the Calgary Flames. They then necked off the L.A. Kings and the Chicago Blackhawks before losing in the Stanley Cup final in four straight games to the New York Islanders. However, since 1982, the playoff campaign road has been a bumpy one for the Vancouver Canucks and one that the Calgary Flames would like to make impassable in 1989. Now with their thoughts on tonight's game, let's join Bob Cole and John Garrett. Gentlemen? Well, Steve, everybody likes the advantage of home ice, and I think more especially this edition of the Vancouver Canucks, John. Vancouver Canucks did it to the Winnipeg Jets here at the Pacific Coliseum. They were even. Winnipeg had six games in hand. Vancouver went on a tear. They won five consecutive games here at the Coliseum, and then four and a tie later in the year. That buried the Jets. Vancouver was quite successful with their defensive-style game in Game 1 in Calgary, but they were completely outclassed by the Flames in Game 2. Should they change tonight, do you think? They'll go back to Game 1. That's how they got here. They played that way from opening day of this regular season, and they'll continue that, hopefully, here tonight. Steve, look forward to a close-checking game tonight. That we do, Bob, and coming up during our first intermission tonight, an oat meets a cherry. Scott O takes on Don Cherry in the coach's corner. Throughout the game tonight, we'll keep you posted on two key out-of-town games, Wayne Gretzky and the L.A. Kings in Edmonton, and Montreal's game in Hartford against the Whalers. Molson Hockey Night on Canada on CBC returns in just a moment. Now, when you pull into an Esso station, you're going to get something new. Something with improved cleaning power. Something that is designed for better performance. A premium gasoline. A premium gasoline that can help deliver peak performance in cars that demand more than regular. Announcing the launch of new Esso Supreme gasoline. designed the new Festiva mm. so you can personalize it <laughs> any way you like mm. uh, for no extra cost but we couldn't agree mm. which mm. way was best uh. Mm. Uh. so we agreed mm -hmm. to leave it up to you Festiva. at Ford and Mercury dealers 
Before picking up the action here in the Pacific Coliseum, let's check the scoreboard. Montreal and Hartford are scoreless in the first period. That series, Montreal lead two games to none. Boston and Buffalo also scoreless. That series now in Buffalo and tied at one. Washington and Philadelphia are even at one. Rouse has scored for the Capitals. Tockett has scored for the Flyers. Pittsburgh and the Rangers, no score. Right now, let's join Richard Loney for the anthem here at the Pacific Coliseum. Petri Strico. Starting on defense, number 27, Harold Snips. The officials for tonight's game, the referee, Mr. Don Koharski, the linesman, Mr. Kevin Collins, and Mr. Mark Bond. We've got a Royal Canadian Air Cadet Band here from Surrey, British Columbia. And with the National Anthem, we have Richard Loney. And this game will be underway in just a couple of minutes. Oh, Canada. For tonight's hockey game, Don Koharski and working the lines with Mr. Koharski will be Mark Vines and Kevin Collins. The goaltenders in tonight's third game of the best of seven. John Garrett, a former goaltender in the National Hockey League, the style of Mike Vernon for Mike, Calgary. Mike Vernon's a small stand-up goaltender. He has to be a stand-up goaltender because of his size. He plays to his size as well as anybody in the National Hockey League. John, I saw Kirk McLean for the first time in game one. And I was very impressed with his stand-up style. A big goaltender who really handles the puck. He's probably the third or fourth best puck handling goalie in the league behind Hextall and Rudy. It's really helped guys like Snap, Lidster, and Butcher. Now they don't have to come back and get the puck. The goaltender is that good with it. I think I mentioned the other night, Bob McCammon told me that he feels that McLean can handle the puck better than any goaltender in the National Hockey League today. And we all know what the Philadelphia goaltender has been doing to this game as far as goalies are concerned. Hextall, I thought, was great, but McCammon says McLean is better. McLean a lot more pressure because he has to do so much more. He looks at more shots, but Bob McCammon saw him playing in Maine. That's where he liked him, and that's why he traded for Patrick Sunstrom. Gilmore, Mullen, and Patterson are going to start for Calgary. McCrimmon and McCown are the defensemen in front of Vernon. Big Trevor Linden, number 16, comes to center ice for the Vancouver Canucks with Sandlack and the Strico on the wings. And as we mentioned, Lidster and Snips have got a big ovation when he was introduced here a few minutes ago. What a popular player he has been everywhere he has been. Harold Snips. Big Harold, a teammate of mine, he was let go to extend his career. They thought he was finished five years ago. He's proved everybody wrong. He, I presume he will be back. He's played so well this year, I think he'll be back next year. Well, they're just doing a little repair work on the ice there, close to where Don Koharski is to drop it in to start game three. The series tie. And a game each, 4-3 in overtime in game one for Vancouver. And Calgary coming back convincingly 
winning the second game five to two. And now we're ready to go. A capacity house here at the Pacific Coliseum. And they're noisy already. In on the wing is Streetco dumping it to the corner, and McCown will come back to pick it up. McCown is bumped by Sandlack. He digs it out to Linden. Stopped on the boards. The Flames have difficulty clearing it out on this first surge by Vancouver. Now it's slapped down the ice. That's out of desperation. They couldn't move it out. And icing is called against Calgary. Scratches for Vancouver, the same as the other night. Kevin Guy, Jim Benning, Ken Berry, Doug Smith, and Daryl Stanley. I thought they might use Doug Smith. He's quicker. They went with Mel Bridgman instead for his playoff experience. On the Calgary side, again, the same lineup as they had the other night when they played so well. Lanny McDonald, Sergey Priakin, Yuri Herdina, and Rick Natras out of the lineup. Natras, because of that hip pointer, he sustained hitting Petri Strico in game one. So, Ramage is dressed again tonight, number 55 for Calgary. Now Bradley, number 10, comes in to square off with Joel Otto of the Calgary Flames. One to draw on the boards. Hunter takes it and skates to center ice. He has Paplinski up with him on the play. Fired in on the glass. And McLean just handled it easily and tipped it behind the net. The Ducks moving out. They look like they're skating with more confidence tonight in the first minute anyway. The Ducks trying to center it. Bradley went after it, takes it on the boards. Half the line is Butcher. Shot. That's blocked in front of the net. and Roberts near the blue line. Not much love lost, John, with these two teams. McCowan takes a retaliation penalty. That's something the Flames have to become as a disciplined team if they hope to continue on. Now here is how game two was turned around. Calgary Flames were able to kill penalties. <laughs> from Greg Adams. Watch McCowan after the hit. It's a retaliation penalty, a high sticking call on Jamie McCowan. So a power play opportunity for Vancouver early in the game, 104, the time of the penalty. The Canucks were 1 for 8 on the power play as Jerry Crisp and his Calgary Flames were almost perfect killing penalties. It's important to note that that one goal they did score was when the score was 5 1 with less than five minutes left. Sandlack. He tried to get it back along the boards to the point where Reinhardt was waiting. He stopped the clearing pass. But Patterson, who was great killing penalties in game two, got it out into the center ice area. Here's Schmiel. Schmiel comes in center there, right in front of the net. And a good chance right there for the Canucks. Into the corner, Schmiel digs it out again. Nordmark played it along and got it back. Nordmark winds up. Take the shot. Reinhardt, nice pass. But he'll get it again, slapped it on the boards. And the Flames get it out, and there's Patterson again, shooting it down the ice, putting it right on the net. A minute 10 left on the penalty. Reinhardt takes his time across center, a soft pass ahead to Bradley. Bradley is covered and won't shoot it from that angle. He cleared it back to the net and got it out again. Bradley stepped in a bit, tried to set it up at the side of the net. It was intercepted by Suter. Holland gets it out.
gives it off to the side of the net, back to Bradley again. Bradley goes for the goal, centered it and went by and back of the net. Streakho played it back to the line, and Streakho again shoots it, hit a leg. Shooter blocked it again. Linden digs it out. Penalty almost over. It's floating up at the blue line, and Holland is racing in there for coverage. He centered it, and a glove save. Made by McLean. With McCown out of the penalty box going in. The first good scoring opportunity. Hey, fella, quit kicking sand in our faces. Good man, what beef is on the beach? Listen, here, you little runt. If you don't like it, find yourself another beach. That big bully, I'll get even. Someday. Oh, don't let that bully bother you. Darn it! I'm sick and tired of being pushed around. Suddenly, you own the beach. Well, now it's your turn to find another beach. Oh, Mac, you are my hero after all. Suddenly, it could happen to you. In Hartford, the Whalers have taken a 1-0 lead over the Montreal Canadiens. It starts with a shot from the left boards. Now you watch Hayward. He has great difficulty in controlling it. Grant Jennings is there to knock in the rebound. 1-0 Hartford. It's a power play goal. Bob? Hartford trying to come back and get in that series before it's too late. Steve will be watching all the action and will keep you posted. Here, no score. Nearing the four-minute mark. Newendijk failed to win the draw. Litzker takes it behind the net and waits. He's with Sneps. Sneps has to backhand it in a hurry against the center, and Sneel just missed it. Falling up his Bozak. He tried to go in, broken up in front of the net. The Flames organized to get it out, and it's grabbed by Litzker near center. Put it back in there again. Merzen cleared it out, and now it goes all the way in behind the net again. McGinnis with Merzen standing there to his left. McGinnis to all goes up to the middle to Roberts. He missed it near center. Down the ice it goes. Newendike giving it a good effort going in, but he missed it. And it's icing called against the Calgary Flames. Good hit by Harold Snaps, keeping this large sellout crowd involved in the game. They handed out towels. They're trying to capture that spirit of 82 when towel power was the rage with Roger Nielsen. In the 82 version of the Canucks, and one of the two players involved.
Taylor can see what happened, John, as, as the play moved out. Ronnie Stern, one of the tougher forwards, reaches from behind McCowan and caught him in the face with a stick right in front of the referee. I think he's okay. Not very long ago, the Soviet Union got its first taste of Pepsi. And while it may be just a coincidence, a lot of refreshing changes have been taking place ever since. Pepsi, the choice of a new generation. Don Koharski, the referee, and he is now explaining what, in fact, he has called. Here's the announcement. Brian McClellan, two minutes for roughing. That's McClellan. Vancouver penalties to number 20, Ronnie Stern. Five-minute major for high sticking and a game misconduct. He's gone. The time five. Stern, a major for high sticking and a game misconduct. Again, the Flames showing that they do lack some discipline. Here you've got a five-minute power play coming up. Brian McClellan comes off the bench. Garth Butcher wasn't even the player involved in the incident, but he is a very abrasive player. Drew McClellan into a penalty, and now the Flames will only have the power play for three minutes. Well, that could be dynamite with Calgary Flames. Three minutes is a long time. If you expect the Calgary Flames to be held off the score sheet, I don't know. score. Louv goes back. Dropping it behind the net. And they'll start from there. Ramage is the man with the puck. Suter is the other defenseman. Louv circles back. So does Muendijk. They try to get some momentum going. It comes near the line. And Muendijk now is away. He's trying to go in. He slips to the fence. Great play. But he was hauled down. And there's going to be another penalty. Shoot it again. 
position. Usually when you have a two-man advantage, you try and work it around for the pass in close. I don't think Suter realized that he had a two-man advantage. Here's Bozek. Mike Vernon's first save of the night, and it's a pretty one. Have to be sharp no matter how long you sit there. That was about seven minutes into the game in the Canucks' first shot. I wonder, John, what happens to a goaltender, as you just mentioned. Vernon has been in there, and all he's done so far is handle the puck on the side of the net until he had that shot. It's hard to get involved. Even though the Canucks had a power play, they didn't have control in the Calgary zone. So you're not really involved. And there's Mike Vernon tested by Steve Bozak on his first shot of the night. You really want some action, don't you? You need some shots. You'd like to get a feel of the puck. I always found that if you got to catch a few with your catching glove, it really you felt comfortable. You felt like you were in control. All right. Ten seconds left in Nordmark's penalty. successful. A beer must have certain attributes. It must be clean and clear, crisp and cold. And it must have a genuine Canadian taste. Molson Canadian. What beer's all about. There are two and a half minutes left in Stern's penalty and right here in front of the Vancouver net. More penalties are handed out. On the power play, the shot from the point, Harold steps in perfect position, blocks it, and then squeezes it to get the whistle. After he was down, Joel Otto took a little swing at the puck, and that created all the excitement in front of Kirk McClay. Well, Butcher chased him out of there.
makes of this happens when you become frustrated. You know, Calgary has had an opportunity here in the first period to really get a jump on Vancouver, but they have not succeeded. And when you feel so confident killing penalties, you don't respect the other team's power play, and you take foolish penalties as the Flames are doing because you figure the other team's not going to score. Gilmore with Patterson. McGinnis. They'll try to kill this penalty. McGinnis a four on three, but this time Vancouver with the man advantage. Reinhardt to Adams. Make this shot on their side. Here's a shot. Rebound in front of the net and grabbed by McGinnis, and he goes to the open side to get the puck off the boards and down the ice. McLean now giving it to Reinhardt. He's coming out. Reinhardt the center. Comes in with a little speed. Now he slows up, gets it back. It might get back over the line. Nordmark could not get there in time. Reinhardt again. Coming in with Adams. Reinhardt trailing the play. Didn't get the pass. Now Nordmark at the line. Comes back to him. Again, he played it ahead. Reinhardt was open. Nobody saw him. Now they do. But he's covered. Back to the line. Again, Reinhardt. And he just missed for the shot. Patterson. Right on the spot to pick it up and clear it down the ice. 20 seconds left on this two-man advantage for Vancouver. They play it around inside the line again. Adams trying to get it back to the point. There it goes. And there to Nordmark. Back to Reinhardt. Off balance. Has to hurry his play. Reinhardt again. Drive catch. Stopped in front of the net. Good play by McGinnis to clear it. When Front Wheel Drive was introduced, it promised a lot. Front Wheel Drive? Front Wheel Drive. But unless you align both your front and rear wheels, Front Wheel Drive can cause a problem. Increased rear tire wear. Front Wheel Drive. At Canadian Tire, we specialize in computerized four-wheel alignment that helps restore all the excitement of Front Wheel Drive. Trust Canadian Tire, Canada's number one choice for wheel alignments. with one flame back. Up to the middle again, but offside. Adams this time. So they'll bring it back into the Vancouver zone for this 
the next faceoff. Hartford trying to get back into the series in the second period. The only goal of the game. And Boston leading Buffalo one to nothing. A goal by Burry. One one tie. Washington and Philadelphia. Remember that series is knotted. And it's a big night for Phil Esposito of the New York Rangers. He loses this one. I don't know what they'll do. And we'll be watching this one for you and give you all the highlights as you see nothing to show you yet. The Madison Square Garden crowd was the only place that I ever played in where I actually felt physically threatened. I'm sure Phil feels that way going into game three. And Kremen tucked it up across the line. Melnick turns to get it back out. Linden missed the pass near center. He was being covered by Newendike. Likely will be watched by him throughout this game. Melnick again. Beats it ahead on the board. Stop near the line. Street cold. Got it out of the zone. And Vernon comes out to play it with the count coming back. And Sandlack in there watching him. Newendike had to go to an open wing. Nordmark played it back near center. McCown shoved it back across the line. 7.20 remaining in the period. Melnick will have to hurry. Is getting changed. The pass is tipped to Linden. Up with Sandlack. He dropped it. Street court shoots. And that's blocked in front of the net. A penalty coming out to Linden. He took a swing at Mullen, who fell to the ice. And the Canucks going to be short handed. Here's the leader in compact trucks, Ford Ranger, but features that make it outsell Mazda, GMC, and Chevy. You're in four-wheel drive at the touch of a button. Only Ranger 4x4 gives you this advanced system standard. And Ranger beats Chevy S10 in standard horsepower and torque. It's Canada's best-selling compact truck. During April Truck Month, get 8.9% financing, plus save up to $2,435 on specially equipped Rangers. The Hartford Whalers make it 2-0 over the Montreal Canadiens. A pretty passing play will isolate Kevin Deneen on the left side. There's Deneen getting the puck. Big shot beats Hayward. The goal coming at 56 seconds of the second period. Hartford leading Montreal 2-0. Bob? Trevor Linden takes a tripping penalty. Joey Mullen was tripped up. Mullen trying to circle behind the net. Mullen falls down as well as anybody in the league. He's touched on the feet by Linden. Goes down. Draws the penalty. And there's Linden in the penalty box. The tripping call, 7.05 remaining in the period. And another chance for Calgary to open the scoring in this game. Series tied, 1-1. Big game here tonight for both these teams. Game four tomorrow night, starting at 7 o'clock. Pacific time. But let's be concerned about this one first. Here's Suter coming to center. Shoots it in. At the far side, Sutter picks it up for the Canucks. Trying to clear it. Sutter missed it. And indeed, it gets all the way down the ice. When you shoot it in, ring the board, you have to have your forwards going. That time there was four Canucks backs. Sutter got it, ringed it around and got it out. There's Gilmore trying to lead the charge for the Calgary Flames. Lister picks it up. because that puck should never have come out in front, but he was very alert. Still no score. A minute left in the power play. Shooter again, getting to center. He hit Squeako trying to shoot it in. Al Bridgman off the boards. And Smith somehow got it by Al McGinnis, who was standing there at the blue line. There's McGinnis. Left it in the zone for Shooter. Shooter, but now he's okay as he comes in. A lead pass to Hunter out of the net. 
was just coming out in time because that puck nearly went in. Almost slid underneath those new ultralight pads of Kirk McLeague. Gilmore, of course, always dangerous. And what a find he has been for the Calgary Flames. Almost the last piece of the puzzle, they believe. They've got a good one in Gilmore. First overall, but this is different. This is the Stanley Cup playoff round. And the first round tonight, tied 1-1. Now it shoots it in for Smallis in this first period. McCown again slams it toward the net. It'll be Ryan Hart getting it out to Linden, whose penalty is over. Linden coming in, dropped to the center. Look out! Great save, rebound! And somehow, Vernon hangs on to it. But Sutter had a beautiful chance to score for... Despite being wonderful companions, my subject group scored low in all coordination skills, showed poor organization, and no decision-making abilities. Unless I can bridge the gap between us, this project will be canceled.
they started the scoring at the Northlands Coliseum in Edmonton. The Oilers make it 1-0. It's a power play goal. Jimmy Carson, the former king, gets his first goal of the playoffs. It's a Messier pass right there. He beats Kelly Haruti. That coming in 15 minutes. Then 15 seconds later, this shot from Steve Smith makes it 2-0. Edmonton, they lead the Kings. But... They didn't think Smith would be ready for the playoffs, and here he is getting a very large goal up there in Edmonton. We'll keep it posted as that game moves on. Here, no score with 2.25 left in the opening period. Fleury is on for his first time. He's an exciting little hockey player. Five, six and a quarter officially, John. Just a little guy with a very big heart. Great speed. Snap's trying to hit his back. gets it away. 150 remaining in the period. Fleury running into Linden at center ice. But Kermit back. Pass to Suter. Ducks for making changes. Allowing the Flames to come out. Led by Tim Hunter. Long rising shot. Bouncing off the glass. Right to Reinhardt. Fleury is going in there. Digging for it in the corner. However, the Canucks get it out. Three of them bringing it to center ice. And it is Brad shooting it in. Goaltender burning out to try and clear it. Al McGinnis flipped it on the boards for Fleury. He's on it a long ship. He'll be heading off now as he shoots it down the ice with a minute and ten left in the period. No score. Fine. First period. Great action. There's Mullins stealing it. He's a dangerous, sharp shooting winger. Imagine your next holiday for worry-free, expertly planned vacations, AMA Travel. Another way to use AMA. Country 105, the music you want to hear. Country 105, with your favorites, back-to-back -back every hour. Direct from Compact Disc. With more music, guaranteed. And walk the streets, make her speed. Forever and ever, amen. Greatest country in the world. Calgary's Country 105 FM. 
Introducing Between Friends, AGT's new convenient long distance service offering you 30 minutes of calling for one fixed price. But that doesn't mean you have to use your 30 minutes on one call. Between Friends, 30 minutes of long distance for $6.50 a month in Alberta, $11.50 in Canada and the U.S. evenings and Sundays. Between Friends, keeping in touch has never been more convenient. And that's what AGT Long Distance is for. It's not over yet. There's still time to take advantage of Gino's insulation and siding sale. We've extended the deadline so you can make sure your home is more energy efficient with glass clad insulation. Till April 15th, install glass clad and Gino's vinyl siding at 20% off. This offer definitely ends April 15th. So call today and save 20%. Also ask about our exclusive San Francisco Bay Window Edition. The Gino Difference. Get it now. to Hartford, where the Montreal Canadiens are playing the Whalers, Dick Urban and Scotty Bowman. Good play here. We welcome the viewers from the Vancouver-Calgary game. I'm Dick Urban, Scotty Bowman in Hartford, and here's the replay of the Montreal Canadiens goal that has put them on the board for the first time in the game. Bobby Smith, and it's 2-1 to one for the Whalers. Scotty, you can look at it again here. Well, Chelios to Naslin. Smith looks at Keane, but he decides to go himself, and I think the puck, you'll see it'll hit the goaltender. It may have hit the defenseman Samuelson stick, keen on the other side, but a tremendous play by Chelios to keep it into the blue line. Jennings scored on a power play for Hartford in the first period. Deneen for the Whalers early in the second. Now Bobby Smith has scored for the Canadians. And it's two to one, and we have an injured Montreal player on the far side. So the mute. But now he's not injured anymore as he comes into the Whalers zone. Gets taken out of the play by Brad Shaw, and the Whalers come back. Mark into Lawton. They haven't seen much action tonight. Lawton shot the play. The Whalers are down 2-0 in the series. They jumped out 2-0 in this game. It's now 2-1 as Deneen is taken out by Brian Scrudlin and knocked to the ice. Here's a centering pass. A shot. Hayward makes the save off Babbage. And we get a real stiff gathering of the clan at the goal crease. Hang on, everybody. We had all kinds of this stuff going on in game two in particular in Montreal. shot by Maloney down the slot area. In fact, Hayward was able to smother the rebound because Deneen likes to go at the net. He was right there, Dick. This is what's caused this big scrum. Deneen trying to poke at the rebound. <laughs> Brian Scruton's got somebody by the pants. And we have minor skirmishes breaking out here in all areas. Tom Martin in front of the net that he seemed to be tied up with Mike McPhee. They put Tom Martin into the lineup tonight for the first time in the series. He drew an early penalty when he clobbered Chris Chelios with an elbow. He continues to play his role. The Whalers lead 2-1. Great action in Hartford where the Whalers lead the Montreal Canadiens 2-1 in the second period. Here in Vancouver, after one period of play, we are scoreless. Coming up next, something a little different. We've got Scott Oak joining the coach, Don Cherry. Our first intermission continues after these messages. This is a research laboratory. It tries and fails to make Castrol motor oil break down. It's the place where Castrol is torture tested to meet the requirements of those who punish motor oil the most. You. The everyday Canadian driver. Castrol XLR, the oil engineered for today's cars. CCM 651 Tax, the only skate with vacuform, heat molded to the exact shape of your foot. The only skate with heel lace, dual lacing that locks in perfect fit to transmit your power and control directly where you need it most, right into your game. 651 Tax by CCM. Turn on the power. Sheraton, we know that little things mean a lot. 
like one number that can get you reservations at any Sheraton Hotel, Sheraton Inn, or Sheraton Resort worldwide. So, you proved this fast? About 87 times. I guess we're ready. Yeah. Let's fax it over. Sure. In the world of Canadian, we know the power of the entrepreneurial spirit. The same force motivated us to create a network spanning five continents. And we're going to continue to grow long into the future. Because our world revolves around you. We are Canadian. Hi. Lloyd Dalbert, sir. Huh? Look, I know you're busy. You don't have to entertain me. But uh, I'll tell you a couple things about myself. I'm 19. I'm an athlete, so I rarely drink. I can kickboxing. You ever heard of kickboxing? Sport of the future? I can see by your face, no. My point is you can relax because your daughter will be safe with me for the next seven to eight hours, sir. Hi. Whoa. Say Anything. Starts Friday, April 14 at a theater near you. Cherry has done this segment of Hockey Night in Canada with some distinguished gentlemen. In their absence, I shall serve as straight man tonight. What do you make of Robbie Fatorik's constant line juggling in Los Angeles, especially in Game 2? Wayne Gretzky played more than he did in Game 1, but still played with almost everybody with the exception of the trainer. Is that the most effective use of the world's greatest player? If you could, if, when Wayne's talking to Walder at home, can you imagine this guy going with four lines? We could, in the summer, could come early. Now, when Gretzky sits for, you know, six minutes, it's an absolute joke. He's playing right into Sather's hands. That's what Sather wants him to do, uh, try to juggle around uh, Gretzky. What he should do is just play Gretzky. Let them worry about Gretzky instead of Gretzky worrying about them. Goal-scoring star of this series so far has been undoubtedly Chris Contos of the Los Angeles Kings, but many thought that he should have spent five minutes in the penalty box after he scored the opening goal of Game 2. His stick did make pretty solid contact with Estetikinen's hit. Well, I told Glenn Sather, I was talking to him this morning, and he was telling me about it. I says, you can cry wolf once too often. The referees, you got to feel sorry for them. You never know when a guy's hurt. They fall down. You never know whether anybody's hurt. Uh, a few years ago, you know, when you saw a guy down, you knew he was hurt. It's like baseball. You remember a guy in baseball? gets hit with a ball he won't rub that all the way down we used to be like that all the time in hockey but you know you got to admire guys like Keeley I really admire a guy like that now just think of him he's sick his record against Edmonton was not good uh, Rudy comes out with the flu and he goes in there still gives it the old try goes in the hospital that night and is ready to play the next night I'll tell you Millar Chuck we were talking about Millar Chuck cutthroat juggler vein unbelievable we have a great sport folks in the other Smythe Division series, Calgary Flames, the real Flames, showed up for Game 2 against the Vancouver Canucks, but the feature bout was almost the Flames' uh, mascot against the Canucks general manager, Pat Quinn. Well, you know, when you have a mascot, I don't know why we have these stupid things. They have them for baseball. I mean, I'll tell you one thing. What he did, folks, was a mascot took the Vancouver sweater, had a truck go all over, one of those little trucks, and he took the sweater and, and let out he was cleaning the glass. i got to tell you one thing. If he had done that to a Boston Bruins sweater, and I saw him, or Harry Sinden saw him, i tell you, it'd be one dead mascot. I'm sure Fletcher is a little embarrassed about that, and I don't think it'll happen again. I'm not sure about the validity of mascots in hockey. Yeah, arenas absolutely. Either. Talking about the Boston Bruins, uh, they staved off disaster by tying that series with the Buffalo Sabres, but you've got to wonder about the wisdom of the Sabres in not coming back with their shutout goaltender from Game 1 in Game 2. Well, I guess he figures he'd give Malarchuk a chance. He knows he can't go far with Kluche, and Malarchuk probably asked him to go back. It's the old story. You fall off a horse, get him back in there, but I'll tell you one thing. He's taking heat right now in Buffalo. He should have come back with Kluche and saved him for later on. He would have had a couple of days rest. Rangers badly beaten by Pittsburgh in the first two games of that Patrick Division series. Is Espo getting what he deserves for firing Michelle Bergeron with two games to go well, in the season. You know, I feel sorry for Phil. I really do. He honestly thought he was doing the right thing, but he, he should have waited. What he should have done, let Michel go in, get beat out, and then fire him like that. Now he's got the heat. If he wins the two games, he's a hero. I understand they beefed up security. They've got double the security to rip down the signs. He's in for a tough time. Michel Bergeron, I just found out, didn't go in the blues. He was going up and sit in the blues and that and have the blues get on Phil. He's in Florida, but Phil, you made a mistake, but I gotta admire your guts. Don Cherry is in the coach's corner, live on CBC. This is Molson Hockey Night in Canada and the Stanley Cup playoffs.